Okay. Good. So that's where the apples start. So they load, get loaded in here, and you can see on the side here that those are the high pressure yeah. nozzles. That's shut off right now, otherwise, as soon as I shoot the nozzle, I'll get a spray in the face. Oh, well, it washes them as it picks yeah, them so up. As they go up, they're getting sprayed, getting all the other stuff that might be sitting on the top of them washed off. And once they get to the top there, they fall off into the shredder. And that's kind of like a cheese grater mounted on the side and forcing them through the fine grate. Right. They shoot out into this hopper down here. And then that's just as a collection thing so that while I'm doing this over here, we can kind of get a bit loaded up. Ready? This is the hydraulic cylinder that actually does all the pressing work. And it's mounted on the bottom so that if anything breaks, uh, we don't end up with hydraulic glue all over our apples, which is not really what you want. So, it, you so they're actually inside bags. Yeah, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. And there's kind of like a food-grade industrial cheese cloth. Right. It's made out of uh, a blend of nylon and I think there might be a bit of polyester in there as well. Right. And that's so that it stays clean, it won't get any bacteria growing on it, but then also prevents it when it's getting pressed from rupturing or blowing open or anything else like that. I'm just kind of stop here right now because oh. we've got extra steps on here. Normally we only do about seven. I think we got about nine minutes because we were out of apples, so it's like, okay, we'll just put the last couple on. Right. Press them all at once. So how many bushels can you do a day? Uh, actually, normally we measure them by bins. Uh, if we're going to, we can do about two bins an hour, and a bin is about 20 bushels. Yeah, a, a, good, a really good day would be about 200 bushels. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So does it get uh, pasteurized as well, or no? Yeah, so the pasteurizer is actually that thing right next to my box there. Okay. The big steel box. Inside there is the, uh, it's got a series of copper pipes. On the outside uh, pipe is it's the gas. hot that comes in. And then on the inside is the, where the cider actually flows through. And it's getting heated and pasteurized. And then gets pumped into the next tank, which is that kind of jeweled one on the outside there. Right. And then that's where it just sits for a little bit before it gets pumped into the bags. It's all stainless steel, construction, and everything in there. So it's a gas heater? Sorry? Gas heater? Diesel. Oh, it's diesel. It's diesel. Okay. It's like a, just the main furnace. It heats the hot water that goes. Right. It's carried okay. on the, the big stainless steel tube. Right. And then the smaller stainless steel tube has the cider in it. Right. So, I said there are copper pipes for stainless steel. So what, what's in this? This is just the... Uh, that's the, that's, that's the after it goes to the tank, we put the filter in the other tank in, and it goes through a fine filter, like a, a okay. cotton milk filter, and then uh, that's just for storage right now, and then it goes into pasteurizing. Right. So you go all over Ontario? It, it's getting that way, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing. It's a good kind of busy. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a short window, but it's a busy window that you're like, like any other kind of market. So you get like so much per bag of... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, how do you determine the apples? Whatever they have. Oh, it doesn't, they, they, they don't have to be a certain ripeness or anything? Uh, not a certain tree pick, nothing off the ground. Okay. Nothing off the ground. Uh, and what do you do with the mash that's left over? Uh, for uh, livestock feed, stuff like that, it's pretty dry. And if right. you feel it with your hands, it kind of feels like a bit of uh, that damp. Uh, I'm to think of Almost word. looks like foam, you know. Yeah, the, Underlay that particle board, that right. particle board that you yeah, get. Yeah, right. So it's pretty dry. This is after it all gets pressed out. Um, Jim, the guy who owns this farm, he's going to be using it for fertilizer for next year. So we'll just put it out in the field, let it kind of ferment, break down a little bit, and then we'll spread it out all over the trees for next year. Okay. Other farms, uh, what they'll do is if they say no, a guy who lives up the road who is a uh, pig farmer, a cow farmer, they'll use it for feeding the cows, pigs, stuff like that. Other people also use it as bait for uh, deer. Bears, oh, okay, cattle, right. Hunting. So it doesn't go to waste. Uh, other people even still think that, oh, you know, maybe you could mix it up into some sort of a Nutrigate bar. Right. Well, be a lot of fiber. Um, we have in the past, my boss in there, he thought about maybe making it into kind of like a paper, but it's a bit, I don't know if we could get the pulp thin enough to turn it into a paper. Right. Yeah. That's about the whole operation. Right. Thank you. Where are you from? Uh, we're from Oshawa. And your name is? Uh, John Wells. Okay, thanks John.